I better leave that down actually because the ice in that will rattle. And these won't be able to hear my beautiful voice. So I was thinking today that I will share with you some of my embarrassing stories. Like embarrassing childhood stories. Because I think that would be funny. Okay, so the first one is from when I lived in Dublin. So what age would I have been? We moved from Dublin when I was eight. So I'm going to guess and say I was like six. Let's go with six. Me and my sister Natalie were fighting in our bedroom because me and Natalie shared a bedroom in Dublin. We did have bunk beds when it was like me, Natalie and our older sister Louise also stayed in the same room as us on like a single bed. But then when she moved out and me and Natalie were older, Dad took my top bunk off the bunk beds and like put it in uh, the corner where Louise's bed was. So anyway, that was kind of like a pointless description of our bedroom in Dublin. <laughs> I'm just setting the scene, okay? Our wallpaper was green. It was like a really pale, light green. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was kind of bright. <laughs> it was kind of like grass green, a bit lighter than grass green. That was our wallpaper. And then mom and dad brought us carpet shopping. And what carpet did me and Natalie get drawn to the second we stood in the carpet shop? A bright purple one. And you know what? Mum and Dad being the amazing parents that they are, they let us buy it. So they bought us bright purple carpet. I'm talking like it, it was like Cabri purple. Actually more, it was actually brighter than Cabri's purple. It was very purple. <laughs> like it basically didn't go with green. Purple doesn't really go with green. But anyway, thanks Mum and Dad for letting us get it. Because we brought it home, we put the purple carpet in the room with the green wallpaper and I'm pretty sure we had green curtains as well that was a weird room I wish we had a picture of it well no I love the room actually oh my god and before that we had a red lampshade but then I remember they got they also got us a green lampshade <laughs> oh my god oh and our bed was brown wood and then all the built-in wardrobes had white wood and then we also had white bedside lockers with green and dark green lampshades <laughs> i know i should have been an interior designer i swear anyway i don't know why i went on the, that big rant of like i suppose that could be the first embarrassing story the colors of my room when, when me and natalie up until the ages of me and natalie were like eight and ten but like one night me and Natalie, obviously kids always fight. So like me and my sister and Natalie were f fighting. And like we used to like be horrible to each other. We used to like pull each other's hairs and like reef each other around the room by the hair. Like she'd be pulling my hair and then I'd be pulling my hair and we'd both be like, ah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like just killing each other. I was trying to like run away from her one time from one end of the room to, to the other. And she was like holding my leg or whatever. And she didn't want to get, she didn't want me to go away. Maybe I did something to her. I can't actually remember. But I do remember the next part because it's quite traumatising. She grabbed like a pen. I remember it. it was like a fat pen that had like a bubble kind of like inside of it. And like it had like water and stars. So like when you'd sque squish the pen, it was kind of jelly-y. And like the water and the stars would like float around. Um, so yeah, she grabbed that. Maybe that's what we we're fighting over. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, she was taking me for some reason. Like you can't dig. And I was running away. She grabbed my leg. I was like being dragged on the floor away from her. I was holding onto the, the bed post, trying to pull myself away. Next thing she knows, she grabs the pen while she still has my leg and gets really thick and takes the pen and like stabs me in the ass with it. And I was like, did you just stab me in the butt? And then I was like, ow, that fucking hurt. Like, did you just stab me in the butt? And then she was like, oh yeah, you've grown. It won't stab you. Like, it probably just poach it. And then I like pulled down my trousers to see my butt cheek. And there was a little teeny tiny like dot from where the pen stabbed me. And it was bleeding. So literally Natalie stabbed me. Natalie stabbed me in the butt with a pen and my butt bled. Like saying that out loud is actually mad. Because like if I heard that now that two kids did that, I'd be like... What is wrong with them? <laughs> so that's my 
second story because I suppose my embarrassing purple carpet can be the first. What's the third? What else happened embarrassing? Also when I lived in Dublin, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was just like in my room or something. I ran up to get something off the dressing table and then I remember I like ran over to my bed or something and then as I was running back because like there was a little narrow like a little gap in between our beds and I was running and my foot caught on the end of the side on the end of the side post at the end of the bed post and I went flying forward and smacked my head on the dresser and I was like what the freaking hell just happened and then I looked up and it was just like bleeding down my forehead like just blood everywhere and I was just kind of like <sighs> and like started bawling crying that's why I have that little scar see that little scar right there that little line don't mind all my pores my pores are really bad I need to get like a a pore shrinker I ran downstairs, I was bawling to mom. I was like, man, the bad in my head. And then it was just bleeding everywhere. And I was like, do I just go to the hospital? Like, what do I have to do? And the mom ran out to the kitchen, grabbed a bag of peas, frozen peas from the freezer, came in and I was just sitting on her lap and she was like bouncing me up and down, trying to calm me down. And I was just like, nah, like holding the peas there. I was just like, oh my God, I'm gonna like, actually maybe that explains so much. Oh my god, I should just blame, e blame everything uh, that goes wrong in my life on the fact that I whacked my head off my dressing table when I was like six or seven. That would explain a lot. Whoa. <laughs> Imagine I had like a concussion and I didn't even know. What are the signs of a concussion? If you know the signs of a concussion, comment down below. Although I think when you're concussed, don't you like pass out? Not necessarily though. Kelsey's outside the door. Hi, Kes. I think she went into mom and dad's room. Kelsey, what are you doing? There, she wants to come in now. Kelsey, I'm sharing embarrassing stories. Wanna join? Let me lift you up. Geronimo! <laughs> Hi. I have to get back into my space. Base in the base. You gonna say hi? Come here. You're not gonna say hi? Okay, Kelsey's not gonna say hi to you guys, so don't take it personally. Um where was I? Purple carpet. Not at least that means a ball. Whacked my head off the dressing table. <laughs> oh my god. And this is all before the age of eight. Like what what else happened? I remember when I was eight, like the week or two before I made my communion, I was like swimming down the stairs. Oh my God, I forgot I used to do that. Oh. <laughs> Guessy, why did I used to swim down the stairs? I used to literally get to the top of the stairs on my belly. <laughs> and then I used to like go down the stairs with my hands on front of me and then most of the times I'd just let go and be like <laughs> I forgot about that but actually this one time like right on my shin I got a big massive streak of like carpet burn and it was like the week or two before my communion so like my communion dress only went to like my knees or whatever so in some photos you can see my carpet burn all over my leg on my communion day for everyone to see that was actually quite funny. I can't believe I used to swim down the stairs. And why did I used to call it swim? I suppose it probably looks like you're swimming, but like... I remember I used to always tell people like, Oh my God, I can swim down my stairs. And they'd be like, what do you mean? Yeah, actually saying it now, it does sound weird. It's like, how the fuck can you swim down the stairs? Like your stairs isn't made of water. Um, so yeah, that was a fun memory that just popped up out of nowhere. What else embarrassing happened in Dublin? trying to think maybe I should skip on down to when we move down to Mead I do actually have another one um from when we moved down to Mead because we moved down when, here when we were eight or when I was eight Natalie was ten and I started in like third class down here and I remember I was out on the we were in I was in third class one day <clears throat> 
and our teacher goes, like it was a really rainy day that day and we had PE, like we were on our PE uniforms. Like outside of our classroom, there was kind of like a floor gutter, like a concrete one. Do you know when it's kind of like built into the path, like it just dips so it can like drain away because it was like pr prone to flooding like a foot or two like away from our classrooms. So the teacher was like, right, because it was a thing that people like messed in the puddles, especially the fifth and sixth years and all the older ones. <coughs> so the teacher said like, no playing in the puddle. Whoever touches the puddle uh, is not allowed to do PE. So I was like, oh my God, I want to do PE. Like, don't touch the puddle. <coughs> I don't know what I was doing anyway. I was walking back along the puddle, like that much away. I wasn't anywhere near it. And I was just walking along it. And then this little shit that was in, he must have been in like four class or whatever, or maybe fifth, I don't even know, but he was he was known for like being one of the messers of the school. And he seen me like walking along by the puddle. He just ran out of nowhere and full on like bumped me in the side. And I literally went flying. I remember it in slow motion. I was like, ah, and then like the puddle's here. And I was kind of like, oh no. And I like fell face first into the fucking puddle and I was drenched and I was all muddy and ew, it was disgusting. And I remember I stood up and I was like, what just happened? And everyone was just like looking at me and laughing. So then the only thing I knew, I knew to do was like cry. So I stood there drenched from head to toe in puddle water that everyone seen me get shoved into and little old like eight or nine year old Leander started crying. I was just kind of like, oh, why is this shoved in the puddle and everyone's laughing at me? <laughs> and then I remember I went into my teacher because I had to get out my wet clothes, ew. I remember she brought me to the lost and found and I had to like pick out some random ass PE uniform. And guess what? I was still allowed to do PE. <laughs> Like literally, she said, whoever touches the puddle is not allowed to do PE. And then I get fucking shoved into it. Sorry for cursing again. I really need to stop cursing. I got shoved into it from head to toe, dripping with puddle water. And who gets to still do PE? Me. Is If that isn't lucky, then I don't know what is. You want to go out again? She's very indecisive today, isn't she? It's getting really cloudy out actually. Ew. I don't like it. Alright, I'm gonna pause these and then come back in a second when Kathy's gone. <laughs> Me again. I just actually remembered another one from Dublin. It's not really an embarrassing story, it's just a funny thing that me and Natalie used to do when we were younger and we wanted to piss each other off. <laughs> like on school mornings and stuff when like man be like, come on girls, like quickly get ready for school. And like if I was annoyed at Natalie or something, like Natalie would go to the bathroom to like go to the toilet and brush her teeth and stuff and then while she was gone I would take her pants like her underwear and her socks and throw them up into the lampshade <laughs> so she didn't know where they was and then like I'd just go along with like getting changed into my stuff and then she'd be like where's my pants and socks and I'd be like, I don't know where your pants and socks are. Will you stop asking where your pants and socks are and put your pants and socks on? And she'd be like, yeah, what the fuck do you do with my pants and socks? And then I'd just be like laughing. And then she'd be like, you put them in the fucking lampshade again, didn't you? And I'd be like, I don't know. And then I can't remember what we used to get. I think we had to get something like a brush or something. And she had to like, we always had to get something to like whack it on one side. So then it would, because it was like an upside down bowl, our lampshade was. It was like, it was like that. So you were able to like put shit in here. So then I threw the pants and socks, they were here. And then you had to hit up one side so then everything would just fall out. It's like a pinata. She'd be there whacking it for ages. And then all of a sudden her pants and socks would fall out of it. But she did the same to me. Like if she was ever pissed off at me and then I went to the toilet to like go toilet and brush my teeth, I'd come back in. She'd be giggling to herself and I'd be like, Natalie, where are my pants and socks? And she'd be like, they're in the lampshade. And I'd just be like, are you serious? Like we're always, we're already late and my underwear is in the lampshade. Oh, that's actually so funny. Shout out to you, Natalie, because these are the funny stories. What else happened? Right, so at the purple carpet, Natalie stabbed me in the butt with a pen. Whacked my head off the dressing table. 
puzzle. That's still like so traumatizing. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have social anxiety because I just fl have flashbacks to like when I got out of the puzzle and everyone's just looking at me and laughing. That would kind of make sense. <laughs> oh dear. Um, what's one? Oh yeah, the stuff in the lampshade. Oh, that's five already. Do I have any more? Will I, will I stop it at five and then I can always make a second video? of doing another five. Yeah, do you know what? Maybe I'll do that actually. Always leave them wanting more. Comment down below if you'd like to see another video of me sharing five more embarrassing stories from my childhood or just embarrassing things in general. So yeah, comment down below if you liked that and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a big fat thumbs up to show me that you liked it and if you want another one, that's how I'll know. Comment down below if you have any embarrassing stories or either direct message me on Instagram or Twitter if you don't want me to share your name and then also in my next one I will also share some of your embarrassing stories but I will do them anonymously I won't like I won't like hang these out to dry and say your <laughs> say your at name so yeah if you want to show me your embarrassing stories share them with me DM me and comment down below what you'd like to see me to do what you'd like to see me to do you know what I mean Share this with your friend. Share this with your dog. Tweet me pictures of your dog. Like my Facebook page. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Snapchat. I don't think I have anything else to plug. <laughs> oh yeah, subscribe and hit the bell if you're feeling funky because that's quite cool to do because then you get notified when I upload a video. Okay, I need to go. I need to go and edit this video. Bye, Rhymes. <laughs> T. Okay, seriously, bye.